Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider and that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from Wrong SA49 from the True Off My Chest subreddit and says, I think my husband's mistress thinks he's richer than he actually is. My best friend thinks I'm a douche because I am keeping silent. Husband in quotes because we're not married legally. Throw away. Please let me vent here. He, 39. Me, 39. Mistress, 29. Best friend, 39. We've been together for 14 years. Living together for 11. He came and told me that he was in love about three weeks ago. I was surprised at his lack of fucks I had to give at receiving such information. I did love him, but maybe my love has always been conditional and its survival depends on it being reciprocated because it literally vanished the second he confessed to me that he was in love with another woman. He didn't want a separation, but to maybe open the relationship or let his feelings for her subside. I said it was over. It was like I never had feelings for him ever. He was taken aback by my indifference, which I thought, the audacity. Did he want me to be hurt and suffer. I told him that he should be relieved that he didn't cause pain. Instead, he has been sulking since. Last Friday, I got home and mistress was there, sitting in my kitchen, sipping my tea. I felt nauseous because, seriously, I told him that this wasn't civil at all and to never be in my home again or I would call the cops. I went to my room and I heard her yelling at him for not standing up for her. Then I heard her say something very curious. Why haven't you kicked her out yet? He was trying to tell her to lower her voice, whispering, Later, we can discuss this later. She left and he came to me apologizing. He said, We didn't have sex here if this is what you were scared of. She just dropped by because I was working from home today. I told him that he had until the end of March to move out and to find somewhere to be during the weekends. This morning, I changed all the locks. From now on, he isn't allowed in my place during my working hours, so if he starts later or finishes earlier, he needs to wait for me to come home and let him in. But his mistress's words stuck with me. So during the weekend, I've been stalking her social media. I think she thinks that he is rich, or at least that he owns my apartment. I think she also thinks that my parents' summer house and boat are his. Unfortunately, the loser has taken her there probably bragging about his wealth because her hashtags were all about the good life. I was telling my best friend all of this, but she was more agitated than indignant on my behalf. She told me that he was scum not telling mistress the truth. I agreed, I know right? But then she said I was no better, not explaining to her his situation either. I was dumbfounded, but she was serious. I told her that it wasn't my job to bring back mistress to earth, my best friend got very angry and demanded that I gave her mistress's username so that she could warn her. No, I said. She called me a bigger douche than he is then. I don't know what's going on with these people. Have they gone mad or have I? When did our moral compasses go askew like this? Can someone tell me that I am not insane? Absolutely, you're not insane in this situation. And what is that friend thinking that you should be warning this person who's randomly turning up in your kitchen expecting you to be kicked out any day now and somehow you got to fix his lies he just keeps digging his hole deeper and deeper it would have been one thing if she didn't know about you but she clearly does know about you to be turning up in your house like this it's absolute madness but ixi says lol you're not responsible for his lies kick him out and leave it op says he has until the end of march not the lizard genital says Random name. You also need better friends. What the fuck is wrong with you not giving the mistress a heads up? To me, this is a clear case of fuck around and find out. Disastrous ad says, nope, not wrong. Get rid of him and wash your hands. Your bestie sounds delusional. OP says, phew, because I thought something was wrong with me when she got upset. I don't get her either. Maybe I will just let her initiate contact again because she was really pissed when I refused to text her mistress's Instagram account. Environmental replies that saying, OP, she just demanded that your ex kick you out of your home so that she can move in. 
Do you really think someone like that deserves the kindness of a heads up? Not to mention, she's been drinking your ex's Kool-Aid for a while now and wouldn't believe anything you say anyway, so why waste your time? As for your friend, they're either a current slash former mistress, a gold digger, living in the land of sunshine, rainbows and unicorns, or were never really a friend to you in the first place. Panda Without Pride says, your soon-to-be ex-husband sucks, and honestly, I don't think that's your friend. Imagine sticking up for the mistress rather than trying to make you feel a bit better. Whether or not you are devastated, you may end up feeling it later on or not at all, but regardless, your friend should be there for you. I'm sure you're getting your ducks in a row. I'd reconsider this friendship if I were you. The audacity of your husband to have his mistress there and her delusion thinking he could argue with you about it. They can live in squalor together. Opie says, yeah, I was actually very hurt by her not being indignant on my behalf. It stinks. I've always been on her side during all of her breakups since we were teenagers. Damn her, really. Lynn says, why ruin the fun of her figuring out that she wasted her time on a loser before she gets to waste more time? She is a knowing homewrecker and deserves no kindness from you. Let her keep sewing so she reaps an even bigger shock later. Once shit hits the fan for them, please send her a pic of you at your beach house on the boat saying, wish you were here, or blowing a kiss at the camera. And a final comment from Love Being an Arsehole who says, oh my god, the uh, it's my house and my favourite. You know when he had her there, because he's totally butthurt that you were completely ambivalent to his cheating he was envisioning some catfight for his love but what he didn't count on the freedom to pursue her unencumbered by housing honestly i would pack his shit and send it to her house by fedex with a note that says he's all yours not sure what he told you but the house is my family's i've had the locks changed so don't ever show up here again or i'll have you both arrested and um, of course, I think it goes without or with saying there should be a glitter bomb of some sort. Glitter bombs, man. <sighs> they just they just cause absolute chaos. I've seen a few videos of these things going off and they're absolutely insane. The only other worst thing I've ever heard, it was on a radio station. It was during a breakup. Someone admitted to like going into their apartment because they had keys whilst their ex-partner was away for a work trip. And they put crest seeds in the carpet and watered it and then turned the heating on and just left. They didn't get to see the, the chaos that happened after, but they got some really strong messages afterwards. You know, you could get you could potentially get yourself in a lot of trouble with that. But can you imagine turning up to a crest house? But OP did update their post. They said, I did it. I had a showdown with my former best friend via text and I confronted her about her non-existent support. But I went to her with my woes. I told her that she concentrated on the wrong issue. She should have been my shoulder to cry on. She should have shown up with wine, ice cream, and a shovel. <laughs> but instead, holy moly, she called me a bigger douche than my husband. She tried to gaslight me, and I realized that she's always been a good gaslighter. I interrupted her before she made me out to be the villain. I asked her bluntly, was, her husband's name, married when you started sleeping together? She told us that he was married before. We all knew that, but we were all under the impression that he was married and divorced before you two met. But was he still married? Is that why you related to the mistress and felt sympathy for her? Because you were her. She didn't answer me until the next day to call me a bitter and jealous bitch. Wow. This was the last one-on-one -on -one interaction with her, I have decided. She's been my friend since preschool, but now we need to go our separate ways. Not only to save us from future hurt, but also to save our memories together from hurt. I talked to my husband too and asked him to not make the separation difficult and bitter and it ruins all the happiness we felt being together because we cannot think back on one third of our lives with resentment. I asked him to take my dad's offer. He offered to help him find a lease on an apartment and pay half a year's rent if he moved out without giving me problems. When I got home, he and his clothes were gone. He left an apology letter saying that he will always love me and never meant to hurt me. So I've finally been able to cry my eyes out and it felt so good. I've been crying since I got home. I lost two of my closest people, but this is what happens when we hit hardships. We see people's true faces. This is my update. I don't know if anything major will happen to make more updates. It is time for me to move on. So a couple of comments after that one. Someone says, wow, OP, 
good for you. Your friend is definitely not worth your time and your soon-to-be ex should be thanking his lucky stars that you are so kind. Brenna says, Tack in my comment under yours because you said it quite succinctly. OP is actually kind-hearted to help the cheater out. Much better reaction than I would have had. I'm happy that she called out her ex-friend's BS. Rejecting much, huh? Just like the comments under her previous post said. She was truly something else, that one. OP responded to the comments and said, It is not out of kind-heartedness. I just can't kick the man out without a fight or a bribe. If I had started eviction proceedings, I would need at least six months to do so, and I didn't want him in my life for this long. So I'm bribing him. Housing is very scarce, and primary lease is almost impossible. My dad has connections with landlords, so he agreed to move out. He's living with his parents now until he gets his contract. I'm happy it didn't get more complicated. This was what my lawyer advised me to do because taking the eviction route would have made it drag for months. But now, I wonder because he's moved out voluntarily like that, you could just say, nah, I'm not helping you now. <laughs> or is that too petty? What do you guys make of this situation? How do you think Hope he dealt with it? What do they always say that moving on and living your best life is the best form of revenge? I hope Hope he does that. But what do you guys make of this one? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And I saw this next story and I thought it had an interesting title. It's from a throwaway account from the Relationship Advice subreddit and says, I lost my wife three years ago. Started dating again and new girlfriend wants to visit my wife's grave. I am one of many who lost someone in that damn 2020. She was my world and we had our future all set up. She wanted children too by 2021, and then she was gone. I felt I had lost all sense of purpose, and after an agonizing year, moved away, not too far, but not too close either. I didn't feel like I could breathe in that town. Still, every Saturday, I get back and visit her resting place. I just functioned for about two years. I'm not depressed or anything like that, but I just functioned. Until I met who I would call Ada last year. We started talking and hanging out together. She can be a bit haughty with people she doesn't know well, but I was surprised to find out how sweet and kind she is under the ice. She gave me something to look forward to again. She likes to do most of the talking herself, which is fine with me because I never know what to say. She knows everything about my wife and this didn't discourage her. She knows I am doing therapy and still mourning, but she never left me alone. I asked her to tell me if anything I do or say makes her feel uncomfortable or like she's not a priority. She said that as of now, I'm doing nothing of the sort. She knows what I do every Saturday morning and never objected to it. But today she said she would like to meet her, as in accompany me visiting her grave. I feel conflicted about this. On one hand, I respect and feel touched by her wish. On the other, it feels weird for a guy to take the new girlfriend where the first wife is buried. How should I approach this? Is it too soon? Should I ask her to wait for that? Now for me in this and the way I'm feeling after reading your story, she sounds like she's a really sweet person and taking your feelings into consideration and just wants to support you as best as she can, which I think is an absolutely wonderful thing. But you have to be comfortable with it at the same time. And I think just talking to her about this, saying you're not quite comfortable just yet, I think it's an absolutely okay thing. And I think from what I'm reading about Ada already, she will totally understand that as well and support your decision on it. But I think if you talk to Ada regarding this, about how you're feeling, she may put your mind at ease with what she says about it. But a couple of comments on this one. Jidley says, waiting is fine if you're not ready. It feels like she wants to support you in something that was, and I'm sure still is, pretty traumatic. Joining you to visit isn't about meeting your wife. It's about being with you whilst you are still grieving and recovering. Inner Pianist says, came here to say this last part. She genuinely wants to be a part of your life and support you, bro. This is actually kind of beautiful. On the flip note, it's totally understandable that you might not be ready though. Opie says, thank you. I admit that one of my biggest concerns is that I don't want to take advantage of her goodwill, even unintentionally. Her kindness and patience are near infinite. I told her I don't want our relationship to be all about this. It would not be fair for her. She reassured me that she doesn't feel taken advantage of and that I do a lot to make her feel loved and appreciated for who she is. 
But at the same time, she recognizes this is a part of me she's willing to accept to be with me. To clarify, I don't do anything dramatic like talk into her grave or crying my eyes out when I visit. I just keep it clean, water the flowers and replace the dead ones. Check the wear and tear on the stone and clean the glass with her picture. Oh, the thoughts and feelings and considerations for, for one another in this story is getting me started. I got to tell you, it's a rare thing to see in these posts and it is really beautiful. But OP does update their post and says some additional info and an update. Some Redditors and some people around us were worried that my relationship with Ada is just a rebound. I admit it is something that I too was worried about. And Ada told me she didn't have long lasting expectations at first. We began dating in April 2023, but as things progressed and she saw my intentions are serious and I'm committed, her doubts about me were gone. She says we were made of the same stuff. We are two loyal, committed and hardworking people and she wants a future with me. And so do I. We're looking for a new place to share and I'm looking for the ring to make my proposal. I admit that one of my biggest concerns is that I don't want to take advantage of her goodwill, even unintentionally. Her kindness and patience are near infinite, but I told her I don't want our relationship to be all about my past. It would not be fair for her. She reassured me that she doesn't feel taken advantage of, and I do a lot to make her feel loved and appreciated for who she is. But at the same time, she recognizes this is part of me she's willing to accept to be with me. To my surprise, everyone approves of us. My parents, Ada's parents, and my late wife's mother. We never got any backlash. On to the update. I talked about this with my therapist. She feels that based on what she knows about Ada and the way she's always behaved about this, that bringing her to my wife's grave will probably be a positive thing. I told Ada that if she feels like it, I'd be glad to take her with me this Saturday. She was happy to hear this. She usually works on Saturday mornings, but she said she'd take the morning off for me. However, I had unexpected things come up for tomorrow. I have to cover for a sick coworker, which means I'll be taking all morning and great part of the afternoon. It happens and when it happens, I either go on Friday or Sunday. I decided to go this afternoon. We're in Europe, this evening here. and asked Ada if she wanted to come along and she readily agreed. We didn't talk much during the drive. When we arrived, we made our way to my wife's tombstone and I just said, well, here she is. I fetched the water for the flowers and start my usual routine. Ada just crouched as if to examine it. Then she just helped me with the caretaking routine. Removed the dead leaves and flowers and cleaning the picture in the light. We then took a walk around the cemetery. It might sound weird, but it's not unusual here as many cemeteries double as parks here. Then sat outside for a smoke before the drive back. We talked a bit. And Ada, who is quite stoic, got a little emotional. She was happy. I let her in on such what for me is particularly intimate and a sacred place. But also shaken because of after all the talking we had done of my late wife. She subconsciously thought of her as someone she'd want to meet and be friends with. But seeing the grave reminded and cemented the fact that this amazing woman is gone. It was a bit of a shaking for me too, seeing her tearing up. And she's the most stoic woman I've ever met. It also made me think how this woman is a rare gem. I don't doubt that in different circumstances, my late wife and Ada would have been great friends. I'm a very lucky guy for finding not one, but two amazing women which gave and still give me life meaning every day. Gee whiz, mate, you got me blubbing over here. I gotta, I gotta let you tell me that. <laughs> what a bunch of wonderful, wonderful people. Teabagger says, had to be that name, didn't it? I've read so many posts here about people who have lost their partner and their new partner wants them to remove all memory of them as if they aren't an important part of your life story. Ada is a good one. All the best, OP. OP says, yeah. I read some of those posts too. Stuff of nightmares. And another commenter says, you are blessed to meet someone like Ada who is kind and understanding. Show your appreciation for her with your love and make her happy for the rest of your life. All the best. Opie says, naturally, my friend, making her happy and smile every day is my top priority. She gave me another chance at life. And like that commenter said, we've seen a lot of stories on here where the opposite has happened and like and again like the comment said they want you to remove your past from your life etc etc but ada sounds like an absolutely wonderful person and all i can really do is just wish you both 
all the best going forward i hope you find that ring that you want and and you continue to live beautiful lives together but now i'm going to turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this situation ah, the onion ninjas around you as well because they're certainly lurking around me somewhere but <laughs> let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and just a huge thank you for being here today being a part of the channel getting involved showing your love not just towards me but towards the ops and towards one another down in the comments at the same time it always means the absolute world to me so thank you so so much and hopefully i'll see you in the next one take care and much love <laughs>